you might have studied about product backlog and some of these aspects related to product backlog might be confusing you. Here we are discussing product backlog from the view of a project manager. Yes, when we use agile ways of working in the projects, how possibly the product backlog can help us and how we use this particular uh, tool. If you are following Scrum, all of the things which we are discussing in this video may not be relevant, but you will get a lot of ideas even in the Scrum context of the product backlog. So what is product backlog? It's a collection of the requirements which are going to emerge over a period of time. So say you initiate a new project and you are working in the adaptive life cycle, the requirements are going to be discovered as you go along. Now initially with the help of your project charter, you may have a project charter or you may have a project level vision also, you get some idea that okay probably this is something we need to make. So your first product backlog will be a collection of high level requirements which you might discover based on your initial understanding of what we are expected to do as a goal of this particular product which we are building. You may interact with the stakeholders also to find out those initial set of requirements. So in this case, I am using an example of a flight booking system or something like you want to launch a website which helps people to book a, a flight from A point to B point. Now you had the charter, you had the conversation and you may come up with the high level things which you might make say user management, publishing the flight, searching it, booking it, managing the inventory, taking care of the payments and you just make the things. And all these ideas are high level ideas, they are not yet refined but you are putting them, to, them into a list and may also work with the stakeholders to come up with the priority. So you can say that initial within a first week of your project initiation you may have a, a product backlog to start with. Now this product backlog is never going to be baselined. The way we work in the agile ways of working over a period of time we will look at each particular requirement or we may add more requirements here and elaborate them and understand them and keep refining this particular thing called product backlog. Now you may wonder how this whole thing will work. I can say that okay we started working on something and we do a something called backlog refinement meeting and assuming the user management seems to be a requirement which we want to get started with, we invite the respective stakeholders to participate in a user management elaboration or understanding related uh, conversation and they may come up and refine this requirement to a small small pieces like we want to have a ability to register. We want to have a login using phone OTP, we want to have a login using user ID, we want to block the users. So this activity which is happening here is something which is helping me to elaborate and refine a product backlog and this activity is called backlog refinement. So if I summarize again, product backlog is a collection of things which you want to build on the product and these things are going to be progressively elaborated. And this progressive elaboration and discovery happens in the event or a meeting or an activity which is called backlog refinement where we look into these particular ideas. Now when we divide this particular big requirement to a smaller requirement, we put these things back into the product backlog only. So the product backlog can also contain very small small item very well refined item and it can also contain a big items. Now when the big item may get divided into a small item, we don't have to put the big item back here. We can say okay this is not needed because now we have a small items which can take care of our implementation of the, the requirement. Now this thing is happening in the backlog refinement meeting. Don't think that whatever we added initially those things only get refined you may get a new idea also and you may also decide that looks like this particular requirement is not needed so you may even drop the idea which was there in the product backlog space. Now you may wonder how those all things will happen, how we will get the new idea, how we will we know about these particular things. So the, the part of the product backlog which is refined well is expected to be implemented. So you run a time box iterations and you make these particular items really operate, executable, feelable, consumable items. And once the users or the stakeholders start looking at it or maybe start using it in some cases, they may get a new ideas and they want to feed it into the product backlog. Maybe first discuss it and then feed it into the product backlog. Sometime may want to put it directly into the product backlog and later on refine it during the product backlog refinement meeting. 
So this is something we can say is, is, is helping us to understand what is product backlog. If I want to summarize by using some of the terms which might be useful for you to understand in order to understand the product backlog well. First is it's a living requirement document. So what does it mean? It's never baselined, it's always elaborated and we want to do this elaboration just in time. So this is something you are always, always working on on the product backlog. Till the time you are working on this product, the product backlog is getting updated. It contains requirement, not scope. Now for a project manager, this is a very important thing. So the product backlog should be in the language of your end users. It is not in the language of the implementation. It's not in the language of the deliverables. It's not a solutioning language. It's a need language, it's a problem language, it's a benefit language. So it contains the requirement and these requirements might be big and small. The items which are becoming high priority and which are expected to get done soon, they will become small. The others might be big. So it contains the requirement, not the scope. So as a project manager, you may want to keep in mind. It's progressively elaborated. So now you must have uh, got an idea based on the living requirement document. You want to elaborate these things progressively. Now you may wonder why to do that? You know, if I have 20 items, I can bring everyone together for 10 days, 20 days and make them elaborate it in the one go so we are more comfortable about doing it. Many of you who are coming from project management background might be thinking like that. Now the, the, the problem which we are solving here is we don't know exactly which requirement will be really valuable. We don't know exactly how the customer will respond to our implementation. So we don't want to elaborate these things before experimenting them. So the progressive elaboration is should be a feedback driven progressive elaboration. So there are two elements to progressive elaboration. First, that we are not elaborating them in the beginning. We want to do it and then gradually learn more and then implement it. The another fact section is that that elaboration should be based on what we receive, we learn from our stakeholders after giving them a piece. Now, if I don't know how they will respond to the user registration, I better not create an elaborated requirement related to search. Once I have a feedback on a user and, and their preferences, how they, they had dealt with the first requirement, then I might be able to elaborate and understand what exactly needed in the search space. Since the priorities are changing, since our understanding of users are changing and that is also based on the feedback you want to do just in time. The final point about the product backlog I would like to discuss is acronym DEEP. Now this is little detailed, not necessarily needed for the project manager to understand. But I think it summarizes the whole idea of product backlog in a very nice four terms. It's an acronym. So let's explore them one by one. The D stands for a good product backlog should be detailed appropriately. So what does it mean? The items which are expected to get done soon should be elaborated well so that everybody understands what is going to happen. The items which are going to happen afterwards are not expected to be elaborated because we want to elaborate them based on the latest information, based on the latest feedback. So we should be refining this particular product backlog requirements appropriately at an appropriate level. Now the appropriately and appropriate level may also vary from one project context to another project context. If you are, you are working with multiple teams, there are interdependencies, you may want to elaborate the details two months in advance because there are other stakeholders who also want to understand what are we going to do. If you are working in a small team, things are changing very dynamically, you may want to elaborate just three, four days in advance or maybe a one week in advance. So we can't say what is the appropriate level for a given team but the team has to discover it. So as a project manager, you play a role to identify what is appropriateness for, for a given project context. So it should be detailed appropriately. The E, the E stands for, the two E's are there. The first E stands for emergent, which is too much linked with the detailed appropriately as well. We are saying the product backlog emerges based on our experience, exp experimentation, user feedback and what we learn about our context and the users. We can't drive the product backlog. Product backlog emerges based on our incremental implementation for it. 
So we should be ready to add new items, we should be ready to remove our previous understandings and we should be always ready to acknowledge that new discoveries will be made and that is why it is an emergent in nature. The last two are little bit interrelated. The next E talks about estimated. So the items in the product backlog are good to be estimated because once we understand some context how big this item is, we might be able to prioritize it. I might want to have a great feature but if I understand that feature is going to cost me too much, I would say okay, let us leave it and do something else. So we need to have a judgment based on the cost associated with each product backlog item and that is something needed in order to prioritize. So the final point, prioritized. So product backlog is expected to be prioritized which means the items which we want to work and implement first goes up, the items which will come later remains bottom towards the end and some and others in between. Now prioritization is a very important feature of agile way of working or time boxed way of working. So as you understand we cannot implement all these items in a one go and that is not the expectation and that is not the way product backlog has been elaborated. Since we want to implement them incrementally we need to identify which portion has to be implemented first. So there could be various reasons or various criteria, factors which may influence your prioritization. Sometime it could be based on the risks, you want to mitigate some risk, so you want to do some items first. Many times it is based on value or sometime it is a combination of risk and value which item gives me a better value to my customer, to my stakeholders and which item also helps me in mitigating risk. I might put both those factors together. Sometime other factors like technical priorities, availability of, of something, dependencies may also influence your prioritization. But whatever is the case, you need to identify the priority of product backlog items so that we can find out which portion has to be elaborated well in a backlog refinement meeting so that we can pick them and develop it in the upcoming iterations. So this is a whole idea about the product backlog. Before we close, many of you might be confused. You might have attended scrum classes and you might have heard a product owner takes care of it and now you are a project manager and you might be confused what is the role of a project manager here. Oh okay I understand product owner uh, is taking care of it, do I need to do something else here in the, in the project context. So when you are dealing with a PMP exam, we can't stick to scrum roles. You might be working in a context where scrum roles and scrum way of working was there. You might be also working in a context where hybrid way of working was there. So we can't be very sure that this refinement, management, prioritization will be done by a role called product owner. If your question indicates that then you go there. But there is a possibility that project manager may ensure this whole thing is happening. Sometime with the help of mentoring coaching the product owner and in some cases if the question in the PMB exam is indicating that role does not uh, exist, you might also be doing those tasks to ensure that we have a prioritized product backlog.